Thank you. Just on the players that you've got travelling with you, Shaw, Sabitzer, Malassia and Rashford, are they all available to be involved and can they start the game? They are available because that's why they are in the airplane. But we, I will take my decisions tomorrow. Uh, we, today we are training. We'll see what the reaction is. And then tomorrow we will take the decision. Is Luke Shaw one that you'll have to make a particular decision on given the issues you have in central defence on Sunday? We have to, for all, we have in particular take decisions. Uh, Simon Peach. Um, question for both of us. Okay, Eric, with Rashford, were you surprised at the speed he's recovered and would he be available to start the game? And for Christian, how important would progressing in this competition be to Manchester United and how do you view the tie after the first leg? Yeah, as I said, all the players, you want always keep all the players uh, fit. So there is always an objective, uh, besides, of course, the main objective, win the game. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I think the man just said it. We, we want to progress. Uh, we want to win the game, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Samuel. Uh, Eric, just on Marcus, how many training sessions has he had before today? He had one session with the team, but he had some sessions before individually. And um, just about Christian, you said at the weekend how, how much of a natural he is. In, in a game like this, where there's so much riding on it and it's a knockout tie, is he even more important in this setting, having a player like that who can keep the ball? Yes, definitely. Um, his abilities, what you say, reading the game, <coughs> um, finding the positions, uh, coaching, but also composure on the ball, uh, final pass. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's very important for us and experience uh, um, in Europe, uh, Premier League ex in Europe, playing big games. Yeah, that is tomorrow definitely is that an item, yeah. Dave. I got a question for Christian. Um, a year ago you were playing for Brentford, now you're playing for arguably the biggest club in the world. What does it mean to you after everything you've been through to be playing back at the highest level possible and potentially if you, if you go all the way in, in this competition and finish in the top four, play, playing back in the Champions League again for you personally? That's a lot of questions in that. Uh, yeah, uh, no, you're right. Yeah, looking back a year ago, I wouldn't. I was dreaming about being where I was today. Uh, but back then, it was just a dream about being back playing football, and then of course taking step by step and just being uh, the best version of a football player you can be. And I was lucky that the at the time manager wanted me to come here. Um, yeah, no, I'm enjoying it. Um, I did that a year ago. I'm doing that even more now. Um, but of course to to go as far as possible be be fun and where we are now I mean already with a trophy and then aims for for two more then that'll be good fun uh, Neil oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, can I just ask did were you confident that um, you you were able to play at this level with Manchester with, with a club of the size of Manchester United when you came back uh, I don't know how you do with uh, uh, it's, I think it's a, it's a wrong question because I mean football is football. It doesn't matter where you play. And for me, it's always been the same. If you play for United or you play for Brentford, you go on the football pitch to play football. So I think it's uh, it's taking the question into an account that it's just uh, everyone on the pitch is football players. And Eric, have you uh, maybe put unnecessary pressure on yourself because of the second half in the first leg? Uh, it's clear how the game went. It's um, it's a tie about two legs. Um, yeah, uh, I think we play over 60 minutes quite well, and then the last 30 minutes we dropped in level, and yeah, we were we became passive. Uh, it's not acceptable. We know that, uh, and you see what happened when you are uh, playing a game for only 60 minutes. You can uh, you can do it, and when you do it, you get punished. So we have to be aware of it. And I think the lesson uh, we spoke about, we have taken the lesson on Sunday, and then you have seen a different uh, Man United, but tomorrow we have to go again. Laurie. Hi, question for Christian, if that's okay. Um, you came back into the team, it was like you hadn't been away. Um, that was um, the 17th time that you started with Casemiro and, and Bruno Fernandes, and you've won 15 of those and drawn two. I just wondered, could you talk a little bit about that relationship and, and what it's like to play with them? Yeah, no, also like I uh, said after the game, it's, uh, it's too... Uh, good uh, 
two very good football players, so it's for me easy, and I think for anyone to to really fill in the, the extra gap between them, it's been it's been easy. Um, so no, it's been uh, it's been good, and uh, like I said, I, I didn't even know we had that many games without the uh, losing, but obviously that's uh, something that in the future we are when Bruno's not suspended, we're gonna keep going. Uh, Adam. Christian, quite similar to Laurie's question there, Casemiro and Bruno, you've built up that relationship with them. In your career, where does that rank, that, that midfield, in terms of what you've played with? And also, Bruno Fernandes missing tomorrow, how important is that going to be and how, how, much, how much are you going to miss him in a big game and a big occasion like tomorrow night? Uh, yeah, no, first question. I think, of, uh, at this, I think this midfield is one of the, the best I've been part of. Uh, obviously, I've been... Uh, Earlier in my age, <laughs> a bit further up the pitch, so I was even more of a striker than a, than a midfielder, but still dropping down, of course. But uh, I think midfield-wise, it's probably one of the best I've been in. Um, and yeah, missing Bruno tomorrow. I mean, it'll be uh, like if, when I was away, somebody else had to, to pick my duties up, and it'll be the same for Bruno tomorrow, who's going to pick up the, the gap that, uh, that he's leaving behind. Uh, quickly, Eric, also... I know you talk about concentrating on your own game, but does it give you any added incentive that a good finish to this season will also stop Manchester United's local rivals, Manchester City, equaling our record of completing the treble? Has it been talked about within the club about how important that is to the fan base that if we had the chance, we could stop them doing that as well? Mm. well we think about our games and about winning our games, and we are not um, thinking or dealing with that uh, um, yeah, we have to improve our game and win our game and our next game so we don't go into and uh, that we get distracted from issues like that. Uh, no, we have to win games. We want to uh, become every game better and yeah, we want to compete with the best and but therefore we have to progress and we know we have to progress even more. Flex. Eric, we've seen some reports of David potentially getting a new deal out of club to, to stay on. What do you think his best attributes are as a keeper and what are the most important attributes for a goalkeeper to have? Uh, stop stopping goals. <laughs> <laughs> Avoid goals. That is, that is the main job from a, from a goalkeeper. And, yeah, and you can do it in, uh, in, in many more ways. Everyone has his own particular style. And um, nowadays also in possession, uh, it's become more and more important, especially I think um, uh, on top levels, because there you uh, take control. It's di more difficult for opponent to get pressure on an opponent, and so you concede less chances. But in the end of the day, it's about stopping goals, eh? so stopping shots, stopping crosses, stopping one-on-ones, uh, etc. So. Um, so that is like more the classic goalkeeper. And I think uh, David is a really multifunctional and a really complete goalkeeper. And um, so we are very happy with him. And just a quick one for Christian. Um, everybody's talking about how you've played so well with Bruno <coughs> and Casemiro, but Sabitza has done really well as well. Um, are you looking forward to forming a relationship with him also? And are you looking to be as adaptable as Bruno was in your absence, maybe playing further up the pitch and doing different roles? Uh, well, I leave the roles to uh, the guy next to me to uh, <laughs> to choose with roles. Uh, no, like you said, Marcel has done uh, unbelievable uh, while I've been uh, been away. And uh, yeah, no, I think it's like before everyone tried to do their job, tried to fit in best uh, best possible. Even Fred uh, done well, even Scott when he was playing. I mean, I played with all of them. I think the fewest guys, the fewest sessions I've had is probably with Marcel because he came after I was injured. So I've only trained a few times with Marcel. Um, but no, he's a, he's a very good player. Rob. Hi, um, Eric, you mentioned last week after the game that you felt like a couple of your players had got into individual battles with their players and it had helped warm them up and that's how they'd managed to finish the game so strongly. Given that you're going to play in quite a hostile atmosphere tomorrow, is that a conversation that you've had with the players that they need to manage the crowd as well and, and those little moments to, you know, to avoid warming them up again? But I, I said that it's also in the development of our team. Uh, we have to... Uh, emotion, uh, you have to use it as a tool. But you have to control it as well, and you have to to put it in the right moment. So the timing from that is important, and that is in uh, in big games especially. You have to know when you use it and when definitely not. And so in general, I make that point. And yeah, last week we did as well. 
Um, um, so uh, focus on the game. F uh, focus about playing the best game you can as a team and as an individual. Uh, Spanish media uh, at the back. David Niebla para el Diario Deportes. En primer lugar, Cristian, me gustaría preguntarte qué es lo que más temes del Sevilla como rival, qué es lo que más te preocupa del Sevilla como tu rival de, de mañana. Y para el míster, eh, el equipo técnicamente es muy bueno, defensivamente muy bueno, pero hemos visto un United que le cuesta más cuando ataca en estático, como en el partido de ida. ¿Qué es lo que crees que puedes mejorar de lo que vimos en el Trafo la mañana para poder ganar? Should I answer first? Yeah, first, yeah. first okay. question was on First you. question. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think uh, to be right, I don't remember the second question. What was the first one exactly? I don't even. I only, only, heard, heard, I, I only heard half, sorry. What, what do you fear about Sevilla? Fear, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, well, what do we fear? I mean, it's uh, we, sh we let them in the game. I think the, the first game, I think we had good control in the first uh, one hour uh, of the game, but fear from them. I mean, they are. Uh, They, of course, have a lot of different coaches uh, in this season, which we've seen. Um, but now they're starting to win games and being a bit of a safer spot. So, uh, yeah, no, what we fear, I mean, they, they're very direct. Uh, they're in good shape. They have some very good players and some very uh, very good individually uh, players. So, um, yeah, I fear a bit of everything. Yes. Uh, yes, I think we are defensively. We are, we are good. Uh, we have, I think, the most clean sheets in the Premier League. Uh, so our organization... Um, I think is all over the uh, pitch is, is quite good, and attacking. Yeah, um, yeah, we should have scored more goals. Yeah, uh, during the whole season, but um, yeah, I'm confident. And, uh, and you see, the last couple of games, especially when we now uh, we have all the players on board, uh, and then we score every game. And uh, so I'm confident we can do that tomorrow as well. Okay. Yeah. Last question, Mike. Question for Eric, uh, Chris, Christian, with the um, the injury, the ankle injury, did you fear at the time that your season could be over? Um, and for us who were at the at the Reading game, um, we couldn't quite believe that it, it didn't get punished by a yellow card at least, or maybe a red. Were you of the same opinion as well? Uh, yeah, I think the, I was surprised he didn't get a yellow, but yeah, at the time I didn't uh, think it was as bad. So no, I didn't. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, I didn't fear for the season. No, I was more uh, concerned when I'm going to be back. It wasn't a uh, fear for end of the season. And uh, luckily, the medical staff has done uh, very well and uh, kept me in good shape. Also, like you see, coming back and uh, like you all guys said, like I never left. So it's a uh, positive for the medical staff.